I'm going to install a radio in my Toyota Tacoma pickup truck. So I recently bought a Toyota Tacoma pickup truck. And of course, the first thing I want to do is configure it for, for my radios. And so this is a quick video of how I install my radio and antenna uh, and the setup and how to power it. Now, whether it's the best or not, I, I can't say. I think I don't know if there is such a thing as the best because every, every person has their own preferences and favorites for how they, they set up their radio. So this is how I did it. And uh, even if it's not the configuration that you use, at least you may be able to take uh, some ideas away from this, like how to get through the firewall with your, with your cables or, or how to connect to the battery and, and where to put the radio. So they started, this is a, an antenna mount that hooks underneath the, the hood of your, your truck. And the mount, the actual antenna mount goes right there in that hole. Now this was actually designed for an NMO, which meant that the hole here was, was much smaller. Uh, and I have an SO239 adapter that I want to use with this. And so I got a, a reamer here and, and just actually drill this out to the right dimensions for the, for the SO239. And so that's a, a nice snug fit. And once we're done, it'll all be good. And uh, then underneath the hood, we need our trusty uh, Sharpie. Have that ready. I'll show you how we use that. And let's go out uh, to the uh, engine compartment. All right, first off, I wedged the towel up in here to keep the, once I loosen up the, the nuts here, to keep this from sliding into the windshield there. And then the windshield washer fluid pipes are right here over it so I'm gonna try to get that off without repping it and then in order to mark where we want this once we get once we are reinstalling it I'm gonna use this sharpie and draw right around the brackets so I've got I know where to reinsert it once once I'm done. And we just take our 12 millimeter wrench socket if you've got it. And remove these two bolts. Just take this and the angle kind of angles inwards. So. And the bottom one. Insert the washer tube. There we go. Kind of wedges around there. Use a screwdriver to kind of open that bracket up a little bit. It's very tight. Then you got to be careful not to puncture that that tube. Proper gap, and this is nice and firm, very solid. Seal it down, make sure that it's all level, it's not sticking up. Under the hood, there are two ready made holes going through the firewall to route cables into the cab. 
On the driver's side, there's a hole with a grommet plug tucked behind the brake assembly, but it's a bit difficult to access. On the passenger's side, there's a very clear and accessible hole, and since I'm mounting the radio on the passenger's side, this is the hole I'll use. First thing to do is to pull the grommet out of the hole and prep it for the cables. And carefully, you just cut along here to cut out this big plug. So then you end up, not really clean, but it's, <laughs> it's all the way through. And it's still got the lip there for the side. And, and make sure when you're wiring this, before you stick it through the firewall to make sure it's inserted through the grommet. I just took a coat hanger, cut it straight, uh, cut it and straightened it out, and then just kind of forced it through there. And then it came out on the inside. And you can see that <laughs> this is a coat hanger on the inside. So I've taped the coax to that coat hanger and uh, then I'll just pull it through from the inside. Let's see if it'll come through. All right, that came through really smartly. The power cords then pass through the firewall in the same manner. I crimped a Johnson power pole connector on the power cord to allow for quick reconfiguration if needed. Ensure that the grommet is firmly seated in the firewall. If it isn't, the sharp edges of the firewall hole will grind down the insulation and may cause a short. All right, I have the, the power line coming in through here. It's just zip tied into the, the uh, these cabling tubing. Uh, and then it comes under this strap here. And this is where the ground, the battery grounds to the frame. And so I just have just a little loop here and, and a, uh, uh, connect it up to this, this uh, ground, ground spot. And then on the, the positive, I added a, a, a spade fuse into the, the line just before it goes into the power. So this is the PowerWorks ITS-12 power shutoff timer. After you turn off your vehicle's ignition, this device will keep your radio powered on for whatever duration you designate. The factory default is set for two minutes, but you can use this rotary switch to set the delay time from two minutes to 12 hours. It also has over voltage and under voltage protection. So I know when you're first setting up your radio, one of the hardest things to do is try to figure out where to put it in the, in the cab. Um, so my radio is the FTM 400 XDR. Uh, it has a separate control head, so it makes it a little bit easier. I can mount the body somewhere else, and then the control head is, is a little bit more easily mounted in the dash area. Uh, so one of the kind of typical ways to do it is to get a suction, suction cup mount, mount it onto the, the windshield, and then, and then attach it to that. Um, so I noticed in the Toyota Tacoma, there's a little box area down there in the, in the console uh, or you throw your doodads and, and whatever, but uh, I felt that it, it would look good, uh, would fit well with the uh, with the control head. Uh, so I I designed a mount that I could mount the control head to it, a, a 3D printer uh, model, and uh, I just screwed it in, and this this base here will just insert into that box area on the dash. And uh, it actually makes for a clean look in that it looks, it almost looks like the radio is just part of the dash. Um, now, it's not up in front of your face like it would be if you had, you know, a suction cup mount on the windshield. But uh, it fits, uh, it, it does look nice and it fits, fits really well. Um, my initial prototype has a flat bottom on it. Um, but I noticed uh, the radio kind of naturally would angle a little bit. So I, I made two more versions, one with a a five degree pitch on the bottom and another one with a 14 degree pitch. Uh, so it's a little bit steeper angle and you can pick what you want. Um, and when I'm installing, I, I try to, to install with as few s drilling holes and, and cutting, you know, in, in the car. I, I really, I really avoid that. 
Uh, so mine, I, I just drilled two holes in the side and that's where the, I mounted the body uh, right on the side of the console. Some people put it under the seat. You can kind of figure out what you want to do for, for yours. Uh, but anyway, this works well for me. I've got a, a uh, the models on Thingiverse. I'll leave a link down below so that you can uh, get your own 3D printed if you want to do that. Mine's two-tone here. I ran out of black black filament right toward the end and I had to switch. All I had left was, was orange. But uh, uh, so hopefully one of these will work for you. So there's the wiring before I actually tuck it up under the dash. The voltage regulate, well, it's not a regulator, the voltage, uh, high voltage cutoff, low voltage cutoff, and timer. As soon as you turn off the ignition, the timer will determine how long it stays on. Um, a choke for the antenna cable coming in, a choke for the power cable, so hopefully we won't have any RFI any buzzes, noises, whistles, anything else into the into the radio. One word of caution in installing the antenna mount itself, the actual bracket, uh, is that you should run the coax on the outside of the hood mount here. If you run it straight through on the inside, when you close the, the, uh, the hood, it will crimp the cable, it will squeeze the cable, and uh, deform it, and I think that'll impact the uh, performance of the of the coax itself. Now we'll test the actual power off timer. Um, shut off the ignition, and the timer is supposed to sense the drop in voltage, and it did. It's going to a blinking green light now. And the radio is still operating. You'll notice that on the, the terminal, since they were bare, and I'm gonna put it under the dash, I used a hot glue gun and just put hot glue over the top to protect it. And the power cut off right at two minutes. And the radio shut off and it's blinking red, which indicates it's below the cutoff threshold. W-K-3-U. And that's the installation after it's in. Looks pretty clean. Uh, basically looks just like a regular car antenna or truck antenna uh, rather than a uh, CB or ham radio antenna. Well, I hope you enjoyed the, the video and, and got something out of it. Uh, I'm using, for me, I'm using the FTM 400 XDR, but I think this will also, this fit, the, the actual mount itself will work with the FTM 100 and the FTM 300 radios. Um, but it may also work for other uh, radios that have a detachable control head uh, with a, a single mounting point, with a single mounting screw. Um, anyway, I just got back from, after I installed it, uh, I, I took a 2,000 mile trip to Florida and back, and uh, the, the, this, the setup worked flawlessly. It was great. I, I had my APRS going all the way, uh, all the way down there, and, and uh, everything functioned, everything worked well. The power on, power off uh, was great. Uh, I didn't have to try to remember turning the radio off every time I got out of the car. It was it was excellent. Anyway, I hope you got something out of the video, and I hope it helps you with your own install in the Toyota Tacoma. Thanks much.